Chuck, I got a question for you. Okay. Uh, how many stars can you see with the naked eye on a perfect night on a mountaintop, no clouds? Just pick a number. Billions <laughs> and billions. Billions. Uh, billions. You know, Gary Larson had a comic where <laughs> the, the caption, Gary Larson, you know, the, the caption was Carl Sagan as a child. And he's looking up and he said, there's so many stars. There must be hundreds of them. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Hundreds. <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of them. <clears throat> So, um, so did, I don't. What, I'm, I'm. I mean, seriously. If you're in a really like, like when I where I where I went to summer camp, and it was on top of a mountain, Camp Sky Mount. Mm, okay. And it was in the summer with the. I mean, when you would look up, it seemed like millions of stars. And campers talk about laying out on their sleeping bag, looking up. Of course, yeah. if you're camping, you're not in the city. You're somewhere far away from the city. So there are no city lights, probably there's no pollution. And campers talk about, you know, just being able to reach out and touch the stars and grab them. So yeah. <clears throat> on any given night, if you have good vision and you're looking up and there's no moon, you can see about 3,000 stars. Ugh. <laughs> what? I'm just telling you. Get out of here. Don't shoot the messenger, okay? Come on. <laughs> 3,000 lousy th stars? So, and if the, that's just in half the sky. The other half, there's another 3,000, the part that hasn't risen yet or will never rise because you got to be in the southern hemisphere for it. So the total number of stars that are brighter than the detection threshold of your human eye in the retina is about 6,000. It's only 6,000. That sucks. And so what I... <laughs> I didn't ask you to get emotional about it. This is well, just you this know, is information, uh, Chuck. Because it because, uh, that is so okay, less let, romantic. Let's, let's, That's so rest, less romantic <laughs> than looking up and, and just like the millions of stars in the cosmos. There's not. There's not. There's not. All here just for me. That's not. Like, okay, so now watch. Let's keep going. So now let's introduce the moon. Right. All right. So the moon has light, reflected light from the sun. Right. Which, by the way... Thousands of years ago, people thought the moon had its own light. They didn't right. really think that through. Um, but it was before science, the methods and tools of science were brought to bear on such questions. But so then, see now, now, see now, you got me because now I want to know what happened to let someone know that it was actually a reflection of the sun as opposed to being just its own luminosity. Well, so I don't know if there was an exact moment. But if you go back to biblical Genesis, where it says God made two great lights, one to light the day and the other to light the night. This is very sort of, they're making their own light. You know, that's the, that's the only sensible way to interpret that sentence. And right. then you assign the moon to the night and the sun to the daytime, as though they are their own agencies. All right. That's so, um, but once you realize that the moon goes around the earth and the earth and the moon go around the sun, there's no other way to... To right, understand. of course, yeah. And then you get the phases come out for free out of that, right? Yeah. Okay, so you bring out the moon. There's only one phase of the moon that rises at sunset and sets at sunrise. Okay? Make rises it, at sunset and sets, sets at, at sunrise. And therefore, it's up all night. And that's right. the phase of the moon that's exactly opposite the sun. Okay? Okay. So what phase okay. would that be? It's got to be a full that's moon. That's a full right? moon, right. Any other phase is rising and setting at some other time of day and night. Right? right. So... Let's take a full moon night, because that's up all night. The moon makes mm -hmm. so much light that the number of stars you see in the night sky drops, because it changes, it washes out the low threshold of what you're able to detect. So when a full moon comes out, the 3,000 drops to about 300. Oh my goodness. Th about 300. That, that's, that's, that's awful. It's, it's sad. It's <laughs> so this, the moon is just stealing all these, all the stars' glory. All the stars' glory. And it, it, so if you have a, a friend who's an astronomer who's ready to go out, just never say, oh, I hope your moon is bright. And you're, it's I like... Hope, <laughs> yeah. That's like, screw you, buddy. Have a really lousy, like, stargazing night. We are... It's a, it's a not very hidden secret that astronomers hate the moon. We oh. hate the moon. When you apply for observing time at telescopes, okay, and it's competitively awarded, there's dark time and there's right. bright time, all right? And the bright time is sort of relegated to, like, 
if you have a, a bright a object. scrub scientist. <laughs> if you're like a scrub scientist, scrub scientist, then you get bright time. <laughs> you know what I mean? It is the, it is the least coveted time. Right. I have a very right. uh, uh, clever colleague. Uh, I knew him at Princeton when I was there. And he applied for time at one of the Caltech, back when he was at Caltech, uh, at one of the Caltech telescopes. And he's uh, his favorite objects are very deep sky, faraway galaxies, all right, that you would never see during bright time. He applied for time during bright time. Okay. And, and of course, he got it. Because there was a very low demand for that time, but people, why did he do that? What? What? And and then we said, well, you know, where where is he? Right, his name is Jim Gunn. But where is Jim Gunn tonight? Oh, he's at the telescope. And then you wait around and you watch, and then <laughs> that night was a total lunar eclipse. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so he, my boy knew. He beat him at, he beat him at their own game. Uh, he, my boy knew what he was doing, right? Sweet. And so the full the full moon goes away. And he has, you know, a couple of hours of really good observing time at, when otherwise people are avoiding it. But uh, so anyhow, so there's not that many stars. So if you whip out a pair of binoculars, even simple ones, that number goes up. OK. And generally, the bigger the, 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 the lens, OK, the, the, the size of the lens is, is, is capturing light from the sky. And so anything that's bigger than the pupil of your eye is going to right. see more, is going to bring more starlight to you than your eyes alone. That's why right. even simple binoculars will up that number from 3,000 to 10,000 to 100,000. Then you get honkering binoculars that you, basically you take it to millions. And so, wow. yeah, so it doesn't take much to improve on the human eye. This basically improves your eyesight. And then you can see much farther away objects. Okay. So, so the real, the real, Moral of this story is. Did this have a moral? Yeah, Chuck. Uh, I don't well, want to. I don't want to imbue my stuff here with. Okay. With because moral is the wrong. Because moral, <laughs> moral, moral, it uh, uh, connotes that something. Um, a lesson for you. To a lesson live, the way for to lead your life. <laughs> exactly. A lesson to live by mm -hmm. would be okay. So, uh, but the I think the real takeaway here mm -hmm. is that human beings have lousy eyes <laughs> that's that's the thanks god it's our, should be the name of this segment it's our most <laughs> cherished uh sense right sense, because, it, it, because it, it brings in information from the farthest distances relative to your other senses so it understandably has great value it also has great value in the history of evolution because sight has developed in multiple ways at multiple times separate from each other and from one another. So if it's so important, then why is our eyesight so doggone loud? No, it's good to know if the tiger's chasing you. <laughs> That's all you need. What's that I hear? What is that I hear? <laughs> you hear it and then you look, I'm running the other way. You... Right, but I'm saying if you couldn't see, you'd just be standing there going, what is that I hear? Oh, it's if you couldn't closer. see. Right, right, right. So you wouldn't be able to know it at a distance and right. then and then run. You, you'd be much closer, perhaps. The, the sense of smell goes to great distances, but it doesn't leave the air, right? right. You can see through a vacuum. And so, so the, uh, our sense of sight, understandably, is highly valued. Um, but I'm just saying that it, you don't have to know that there are millions of stars in the night sky for your survival. So right. there was no evolutionary pressure to build our eyes to be even better than what they are. That's all I'm saying. Gotcha. Yeah. So and that makes per yeah. that makes perfect right. sense. Right. So you can't totally blame God for that. For, for okay. What's going on. All right. 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 So, uh, but okay. the fact is, though, it's still far less romantic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to think that there are three thousand lousy stars up there, <laughs> and then on a full moon there's only three hundred. It's like nobody even came to the concert. So now, if you're really yeah. geeky, okay, and I've, I've done this many times. If you're really geeky, uh, your fist at arm's length held up to the sky spans 10 degrees okay okay so one way to test this is you stick your fist out at arm's length and put your bottom of your fist on the horizon then put another fist on top and on top like you're climbing a rope and you keep doing this and then when you get straight up it should be nine fists so 90 degrees from horizon to the top okay now you might say well suppose somebody has like really big hands right ask it 
What what if somebody has really big hands? They generally have long arms. Ah, that would make the difference. That's make the difference. So right. this is one of these ratios that is relatively constant for humans. Your fist right. at arm's length. But it does not work for orangutans. No, no, yeah, if you have a high ape index, that's you're a problem. Right. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> if, you, if your knuckles have dragged... <laughs> are dragging on the ground. <laughs> Why are my measurements always <laughs> off? No, they just be like... I can never get the right measurements. No, you just got to go to the other page where I have the ape rules right, rather exactly. than the human rules. <laughs> um, so, so here's what you do. So take your fist. Your fist, you know, my fist is... 10 degrees top to bottom and maybe 8 degrees left and right, but that doesn't matter for this exercise. Call it 10 by 10, okay? Okay. So your fist at arm's length in the sky blocks 10 by 10 degrees, which is 100 square degrees. Right. Okay? 100 square degrees. Here's what you do. Find any random spot on the sky, put your fist up, and then move your fist aside and count how many stars you're blocking. Okay. Just count it. Okay? All right. I know how many square degrees there are on the sky. There's 42,253 square degrees in the entire sky. Wow. Okay? If I, last I did my math correctly. It's, it's like trig math to get that right. Okay. So, okay. Because it's spherical. It's a spherical thing and you, it's squares. Right. And, but anyhow, for about 42,000 square degrees. So how many hundred square degrees are in 42,000 square degrees? There is... Uh, 420 square degrees, uh, uh, 420 patches of 100 square degrees. Right. Okay. So get your number multiplied by 400, and you should come up with about 6,000, plus or minus, wow. of course. And I, I've plus done this many times. It bears out. Wow. Now, that, I, I'm telling you that I'm not going to do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to sit there and look at the stars. I'm not going to do that. I'm Chuck. not doing that. And I want to say I'm disappointed, Chuck, but it's just I, I, I was, no, asked, that's, uh, I was listen, asking that's too much. Too, I was that is too, too geeky even for me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was asking too like, much there. I'm down, I'm down for the telescope. <laughs> I'm down for the stargazing. I'm down right. for the laser pointer. I'm down for <clears throat> seeing what constellations. All right, one I'm last thing. But, one last but, thing. But once, once you start... Getting, you know, to the... Making you calculate. 40,000 degrees. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So, um, so let me leave you with a positive note, okay? Okay. All right. All right. Here you go. Um, the farthest object visible to the unaided eye is a galaxy beyond the stars of the constellation Andromeda. So, you find Andromeda in the sky, and there's stars there, and then there's like a fuzzy patch. Right. Okay. The stars you see are just sitting on our nose in our own galaxy, the Milky Way. The fuzzy patch is well beyond this, two million light years away. Wow. Okay. You can see it because there's so many stars there. And the light is, but you can't resolve it, so it's just a puddle of light. In fact, it wasn't until 1920, no, 1926, that Edwin Hubble, the man, not the telescope, put his telescope on this fuzzy patch and resolved it into stars. Wow. Okay? So before then, people just called it a nebula. It was like the Andromeda Nebula. They thought it was just a fuzzy cloud. So that, this is why what things look like to you aren't always what they are. All right? So he does this, and you realize it's an entire other galaxy. That galaxy is visible to the naked eye. So that galaxy has 200, 400 billion stars in it. Right. So if you want to, if you want to think differently about what the human eye can see, you take your three thousand that are in our galaxy up there, and then add to it the hundreds of billions in the Andromeda galaxy, which you can also see. Wow! Look at that. And in that case, when you look up, if you include the Andromeda galaxy in your field of view, you get to say you're seeing billions of stars <laughs> again. Billions and billions. Billions. Of problem solved. Problem solved. So there you well, go, Chuck. That's fascinating. That's great stuff. I don't know if you ever I'm, thought about how many stars you see at the night sky, but that's kind of more than you ever cared to know about. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I don't. Here's the thing: I don't have to think about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is, another explainer video from the universe and from Star Talk. All right, we're, we're done here. Uh, this is Star Talk, Chuck. Always good to have you. 
always good to be here. Keep looking up. <laughs>